Coin traders, what is going on? How are we doing? Thanks for joining me for the show. Looking at Algo Rand, A L G O, Algo fam, welcome. So it's been almost about two weeks since we did cover Algorand on the channel, so lots to cover and talk about. First, want to start off flipping over here to Twitter, talking about a post that I made two days ago, talking about a lot of relevant trend lines, so we're going to be going over those in the show today, as well as talking about why the 10 cent level is going to essentially invalidate all of them, and we know that it's going to be a super strong psychological level, of course, and especially with a lot of the other bullish things starting to shape up here, we can talk about a lot of instances and reasons why we think that we could be looking at a good potential of breaking the 10 cent psychological level and obviously a lot of these trend lines here coming up soon. But yes, yeah, so if you're not following me over here on Twitter or X or whatever you want to call it, I still like Twitter personally. I don't think I'm ever going to adjust to X. But anyway, yeah, at coin underscore trades is the handle. Do look forward to chatting with everyone since I'm a lot more active and it's obviously way easier to post and respond to comments and things like that and share a lot of great data. So do have a lot of content over on Twitter. Make sure to drop me a follow if you're not already and look forward to chatting with everyone over there. But back to the charts and definitely a lot of still sideways boring action over the last month as we have just not really seen any price change and kind of just stuck in this zone over the last month. But several good things to actually be looking at. And one of the big things is, is actually that We've seen the first time that we've seen five bullish candlesticks in a row since effectively the start of the year. So although it doesn't seem like much, and obviously we're still getting stuck at a double top high right now, and actually kind of looking like we might form a little bit of this inverse head and shoulders type pattern, this is actually still a good sign. But unfortunately, if we actually turn on volume here and look to the bottom, not really that good of a sign of sign of strength because we do have a little bit of decrease in volume as we do get stuck up at this price level resistance unfortunately not able to make a new high and also getting stuck up in this big resistance zone like we see time and time and time again unfortunately for algorand in between the 26 and 50 period exponential moving averages but one of the good things that we can actually go ahead and look at here is that we're actually starting to see a lot of support forming on top of this 12 period exponential moving average which is definitely the first sign of what we want to see so despite the fact that okay first we did run up break this as resistance break the 26 get stuck, actually hold 12 period exponential moving average on this daily as that big point of support for the close so far. But obviously current candle is going to tell everything right now, especially since finding this big overhead closing level of resistance just below 980. So that's obviously going to be big point of closing resistance, actual price target 978. So effectively, if we do want to look at the highs are coming in the previous candle that closed, closed at a high of 984 five compared to 985 on that day as well so a nice perfect resistance point for price level in between 985 for the top end price and also the closing level at 978 big zone of support and also closing resistance coming in though so if we do look to the left we see this point as several times of support as well as on this bounce resistance so hopefully especially now since the last two candles did find this overall zone as nice support along with this 12 period exponential moving average ideally we would find it as support once again so price for that would be 952 down to about 945 so ideally that is going to be our downside target in the event we do see a little bit of slippage so the fact that if we do hold those levels would be a very nice consolidation point especially since finding this high typically what we expect especially after five days of nice rallying upside is actually a little bit of consolidation so being able to hold some of these supports that was previous resistance would actually be a good sign and then ideally being able to run up, test this resistance zone from 978 to 985, and then hopefully crushing this 50 period exponential moving average following that. So pretty much that is the ideal setup here. And especially since we have just been seeing a complete taper off and low amount of bear selling pressure, we do expect and like to see consolidation on those types of moves. And so then if that happens, we would be looking up overhead at the 10 cent psychological. So just drew the price level line right there, which honestly, by the time we actually see prices get up to there, would see this 50 period exponential moving average actually pulling back, back down probably below that 10 cent psychological level. But so now I actually do want to turn off volume here and flip on over into the 12 hour chart because a lot of great things that we typically look for in a reversal here. So initially, and let's actually go ahead and clear up these price levels as well. So you can go ahead and focus more specifically on these exponential moving averages as resistance. 
So the last time on this 12 hour that we actually saw the price get above and maintain this little level of support and show a little bit of fall through right before this big nasty flush was back in the middle of August. And unfortunately, we did have to follow suit because we were actually positioned very nice here to see a little bit of continued upside. But unfortunately, the rest of the market had other plans. But anyway, nonetheless, I digress. You can see how on all of these flag type moves getting stuck up in between the 26 and 50 flag type moves stuck up in between the 26 and 50 still yet on this held 12 period exponential moving average as a little bit of that support. So after finding this low and a little bit of upside, seeing a top out like we talked about, but still pulling back, maintaining both 12 and 26 period exponential moving averages as that supports extremely good sign, especially after holding a lot of price action on top of the 50 here. So the fact that now we're starting to see the 12, the 26 and the 50 get extremely, extremely tight, still have prices maintain that support on top of it is exactly what we see when we typically look for a projected and predicted next upside move with follow through. So after seeing this whole zone be so resistive on all of these move attempts for the last month, finally getting up over this hump and now being able to provide these exponential moving averages as that nice support, what we're really looking for now is just a complete flippage where we do have 12 on top, 26, and then 50 on bottom. And then once we actually do confirm that trend, kick off those supports and start to make higher highs and higher lows, that'll confirm that the path of least resistance is to the upside because then in that instance, we will likely be breaking a lot of these trend lines, proving them as support along with the exponential moving averages. And that's really what we're in shape for. But just like we talked about back in August, that is something that we have to be mindful of that we could get another rejection and a fake out because the crypto market is dirty and likes to play tricks, unfortunately, like that. Now, so kind of actually want to talk about the RSI relative strength index, specifically look at it on a few different type frames, because what we typically see and what we talk about is bullish divergence being a very strong signal. So obviously, without seeing a complete new lower low, and effectively, we actually had a higher low, despite having a lower low for the close. So for example, if we actually look at the close on these two levels, what we're actually looking at is a close right about 887. And that happened on the 11th of September compared to on the initial move, we did find a close right around 932. So if we apply that to this RSI on the 12 hour chart, found our low and actually started to see a nice trend line trending to the upside. So we actually have low, higher low, higher low. And on each of these instances, we actually see a lower low in the price of the close because effectively what we have this set for right now for this RSI is the RSI actually tracks the price on the close. So that's why we actually have lower lows in price, higher lows in the RSI. So for example, if we actually look at the settings for this RSI, you can see that right here where it says source, you can see it says close, which is based on the candle where the candle actually closes. So you can see that this will actually move until it prints which is based on where the current price is and where it closes, not necessarily where at all time lows. So anyway, like we've talked about before, we do know that bullish divergence is a good sign and a good thing. But when you have three points of data, which is to say, like we said, higher, low, higher, low, higher, low, and then on the price, low, lower, low, and then lower, low, that's actually an even better sign for a sign of strength fading to the downside and weakness, which does mean that the trend's going to start to have that happen which is a little bit better indication of that pop and continued upside. Of course, one thing that we always do have to be mindful and aware of though, is that that does put us closer to being overbought. And as you can see every single time that we have been overbought previously on all of these moves. So for example, back on the middle of June or end of June, and then also back here at the start or beginning of August, every single time didn't even necessarily break it, but got very close to it before a big retracement and pullback. So despite having those higher lows in that trend, that's still something that we have to be aware of because that does put us higher in that regard. But obviously, nonetheless, fading on the upside of this exponential moving average trend for the RSI is still a very good sign. Okay, so now actually let's flip back into the, let's actually look at the two day chart here because we can talk about that as well. And a four hour, or sorry, four day chart is actually even more apparent for this RSI divergence here. So found our low, now looking at higher lows. And then if we actually do zoom in on this overall price and talk about RSI for this four day chart, you can definitely see looking at lower lows, especially for this overall close as well. Okay, so now while we are on this four day chart as well, big thing to talk about is kind of more or less a double type bottom forming here. And now this isn't necessarily a typical double bottom since there's only one test, but the thing that makes this more or less of a double bottom in this regard 
is that we had a very quick sell-off back in June, if everyone remembers that, I'm sure, which did see a very quick bounce and a very big retracement, which ultimately slowly tapered down to test the support level once again, which is very stereotypical of what we typically see in double tops and double bottoms. And we've talked about it a bunch of times here on the channel, where, for example, like if we look at a double top, we see a quick run-up, rejection from a resistance, a quick pullback, and then a slow, gradual climb and an upside move up to that resistance point before finally rejecting, kind of looking like a little bit of a Bubba Fett type pattern. And then obviously on the flip side, same sort of thing, like we just talked about a quick dip rejection off a support level bounce, and then a slow retracement back towards that support when we do find a longer accumulation, which is what confirms this as a longer term support, especially after bouncing off it the first time. So if we actually look at what we're experiencing right now, that's exactly what we do see. Quick sell-off rejection. Oh, I actually went too low, but you get the picture. Quick sell-off rejection from that level, and then a slow, gradual pullback. And right now, we're actually looking at rejection from the 12-period exponential moving average on this four-day. And the thing about that is that since we are now confirming a zone of lower support down to 873, we do know that support has been holding, but also we do have this rejection resistance exponential moving average getting extremely tight. So we also know that this is going to be forming more or less kind of a descending triangle as well. And we can draw a price level to match that. So this does shape up into a lot of the levels like we talked about. In addition, we can also look at some of these support lines, which does form more or less this falling wedge. But like we talked about, we know we do have extremely strong support and a lot of very nice downside strength coming in down to about 873. So from about the nine cent down to about 873. Very nice support that has been holding that we haven't really seen break despite multiple attempts over the last few months. So timeframes for this, we're going to be looking about the next few weeks to probably about a month, whether or not we can actually see a shaping of this happen or whether or not we'll actually see a little bit more upside move and actually see some strength continue to break this 12 period exponential moving average, hold that close and then even then hold a close on top of the 26 in that instance. So if we do look left, the last time we actually did break 26, we did get rejected, or sorry, break 12, we got rejected from the 26 in both instances. So holding support to the downside, breaking 12, and then finding a strength to rally and break on top of 26 is really going to be a good sign on this longer term four day chart, which I expect to play out, especially if the 12 hour and the daily charts continue to shape, shape <laughs> excuse me, continue to shape up bullish like we have been expecting and like they have been showing signs of doing so. Now, next big trend line to look at that's extremely apparent on this four day chart, and it's a very apparent on other shorter time frames as well. But if we look at the close from the previous level, this actually forms a very nice resistance point for what we've been seeing over the past month. So looking left, big point of closing support on this four day, closing support, closing support. So we had three nice tests. And then also once this actually rejected bearish from this falling wedge, we then are now finding it as big points of resistance. So again, if we drive price level at the 10 cent psychological mark, then you can see how that would actually align to this current resistance trend line as well. So plenty of big downside resistances going to be coming in right at the 10 cent level. But also we know that big levels of support are going to be found to the downside. And so, yeah, pulling up volumes, once again, you can see that just a decrease in overall volume across the board. So we know that typically this is what we see on the tail end of a falling wedge. And especially if we are seeing a price level and zone hold up as extremely nice support, that does give a little bit more leeway and predictability towards a very nice upside explosive move, especially factoring in a very nice bullish break on top of the 10 cent psychological mark. We actually go ahead and take a look at the weekly chart here before we wrap up. Once again, just highlighting the big amount of overall decreasing bearish volume that we have just been seeing across the board, but also just want to point out to a very nice closing level of support for this weekly on top of 920, so actually above the 9 cent psychological level as well, which does confirm a very nice downside zone of support, as you can see from all the downside wicking. So if we actually look at the number of tests, we have one candle, we have two, three, four, five weekly candles completely found closing level of support on top of this. Meanwhile, their weekly candle did show a wickage and a shadow that did slip below that 920 level. So we do know that a big point of closing support coming in right at 920. But then, of course, upside resistance going to be looking at 976 right now for the weekly, which would mean a very big zone of resistance until up overhead at almost 11 cents at 1093. 
So just because we do break 10 cents psychological does not mean that we're going to see an instant rally and pump because we do have such a big strong zone, especially looking at the 12. And when we talk about these exponential moving averages, you can just see the big gap that we do have to ultimately close, which does mean it will take a very long time ultimately to get this changed. But of course, like we always talk about, you do need to change the short term trends first in order to change any longer term trends. So that's what we are going to be looking at and why we do like focusing on the 12 hour and the daily first. But yeah, so overall, that's pretty much what we're going to be looking at in the coming days and weeks, and especially whether or not we will see a nice bullish break from a lot of these downtrend lines and the 10 cent psychological. So definitely drop me a comment in the notes below. Let me know what you think will happen and what your date prediction is for that as well. Do love getting back to each and every one of you. And also, if you did enjoy the show and you haven't done so just yet, also appreciate hitting the thumbs up, like, and support, <laughs> excuse me, subscribe button does mean so much. And yeah, once again, looking forward to chatting with everyone over on Twitter. All right, well, that's going to go ahead and wrap it up. So thanks again for all the continued love and support. As always, it does mean so much. Stay safe, take care, and I'll catch you back in the next video.